In this video, we're going to show you how to do a timing belt kit on your Toyota Tundra, located behind the front cover. Remove the radiator cap. Remove the three bolts in the rear of the skid plate. There's one here, there should be one here, and one more here. We only have this one. Same thing in the front, there should be another three. Two of ours are broke and we only have one. Remove this one. There's little hooks on the back of the skid plate that'll hold it up. Tilt up, push up, and then pull back and remove the skid plate. Twist this white cap, open it up. Make sure you have a bucket under it. and start to drain the coolant. Make sure you tighten the drain plug on the radiator. Remove the clamp on the bottom radiator hose. Push it off. Remove the clamps off the two oil cooler hoses, slide them back, and we're going to remove the hoses. Make sure you have a bucket to catch any oil that comes out. If you have plugs, I recommend putting them in here to minimize the fluid loss. You'll have to refill the transmission fluid once you're done for anything you've lost. Do the same thing on the other side. Remove the four bolts for the fan shroud using a 10 millimeter socket. Pull the coolant lid up, take the hose off the radiator, put it in there for safekeeping. We're going to pull the hose off the top using a pair of pliers. Remove the clamp. Pull the hose off. We're going to tuck that up out of the way. Remove the four bolts for the fan shroud using a 10 millimeter socket. With all the bolts removed, push this fan shroud back to give yourself room to pull the radiator out. Going through the lower part of the grill and the bumper, we're going to put a long extension through with a 12 millimeter socket to remove the bottom bolt for the radiator. Do the same thing on the other side. Remove the top radiator bolts. Do the same thing on the other side. Pull straight up and slightly back. And remove the radiator. Remove the fan shroud. Using a pry bar to hold one of the studs, keep this Still, we're going to use a 12 millimeter wrench and loosen all of the nuts for the fan.
with all the nuts loose. Go ahead and remove them. All the nuts off, wiggle the fan and remove it. Remove the plastic cover using a 10 millimeter socket. Be two nuts on either side. Pull the cover straight up. Remove the 10 millimeter bolt for the power steering hose bracket. Using a 10 millimeter socket, loosen the hose clamps on the intake. Do the same thing on the box. Remove the intake. And I'm just going to flop it backwards like that out of the way. Pinch the clamp. Pull it off the nipple. Do the same thing on the intake. Remove it out of this clamp right here. Using a 14 millimeter socket, pull back on the tensioner and remove the belt. Remove the fan pulley. Remove the clamp for the lower radiator hose on the top side. And remove the hose. Using a 14 millimeter, remove the one nut and two bolts on the power steering pump. There's one nut on top, and there's going to be one bolt on the side. And one on the bottom. Using a 14 millimeter socket, remove the idler pulley. There's three 10 millimeter bolts holding on the right hand timing cover. One up top, one on the side. And then one right in the middle. And one more bolt right on the bottom. Remove the timing cover. Remove the one nut for the coolant pipe. The top nut and the bottom bolt are a 10 millimeter. Remove the connector. I'm going to use a pair of long needle nose pliers and go from the top. Gently pinch and pull. Push down on this little tab and pull the harness out. There's a little squeeze clamp on top. Move that out of there. And we can drag our whole harness over to the side, out of the way. Remove the clamp on the thermostat assembly. Do the same thing on this top clamp to the 
throttle body. Remove the hose from there. And remove it off of the thermostat assembly. Caution, coolant will come out. Move the four 10 millimeter bolts for the right hand timing cover. Squeeze the pinch clamp to release the bracket on the front side for the sensor. Remove the harness out of the front clip. Remove the grommet and pull the cover out. Remove the little sensor clip and push the sensor connector through and you can reinstall this into here if you removed it. Using a 12 millimeter socket, remove the two bolts for the middle timing belt cover. Pull the cover off, remove the Phillips head screw for the sensor bracket on the AC compressor. There was a ground strap under that. Remove the sensor for the AC connector and remove the connector on the back side. And now that bracket will just drop down with the compressor. Using a 14 millimeter wrench, remove the bolt for the AC compressor. The rear bolt for the AC compressor is a 12 millimeter. There's two bolts on the bottom of the AC compressor. Remove those with a 12 millimeter socket. There's one for this bracket right here. And there's another one for the nut down there. Then there's one in the back, all the way over here. Remove the one last bolt on the back of the AC compressor. As you take this out, the compressor is going to want to fall. Remove the bolt. And let the compressor drop down and it'll sit right on the oil filter housing. There's one 14 millimeter nut and one 14 millimeter bolt. I'm gonna loosen these up. And then there is one 12 millimeter bolt and one 12 millimeter nut on top.
remove the fan housing assembly. Using a 22 millimeter socket, I turned the engine over to top dead center. There's a mark in the top of the crank pulley. You're going to line up with the zero. And when you do that, there will be a mark in each cam pulley. You want to line those up with the marks on the back of the case. If the crank pulleys are not lining up with these top marks, spin the crank another 360 degrees until they line up. I'm going to pull them slightly forward until my green dots line up with these T marks. And that is Toyota's idea of unloading the cam so when you take the belt off, it does not jump timing. Just like that. Using a 22 millimeter socket, I'm going to remove the crank bolt. I recommend using a holder for the pulley, but if you don't have one of those, an impact works just fine. There's a 14 millimeter nut and bolt for the alternator. The nut's right here. Bolts down here. There's a 12 millimeter nut for the alternator. Just here. Pull the alternator forward. Set it down here to hang out for now. The 12 millimeter nut. 12 millimeter bolt. Just one more 12 millimeter nut up top. And that came off as a full bolt as well. Remove your auto tensioner. Using a crank pulley puller or a pry bar, you're going to remove the crank pulley. There's four 10 millimeter bolts to take off this lower cover, one right in the middle. And one right here. Take off the exciter ring. And I'm going to make two marks to correspond from my crank pulley cog to the rear case cover. Using a 12 millimeter socket, we're gonna go between the two tensioner bolts and loosen them. A little bit one by one. Just going back and forth. Remove the tensioner, remove the timing belt, using a 10 millimeter hex head, remove the bolt out of the auto tensioner pulley. Remove the pulley. There's a washer on the back side. Using a 14 millimeter socket, remove the timing belt idler pulley. Torque the timing belt tensioner to 19 foot pounds. Torque the timing belt idler to 25 foot pounds. 
Remove the two 12 millimeter bolts for the thermostat assembly. The thermostat housing assembly was pretty stuck on because of the O-ring right here. It took quite a bit of wiggling to be able to get it off. Remove the bolts on the water pump using a 12 millimeter socket. Make sure you have a bucket under this before you remove it. Remove this plastic piece. Remove the water pump. Clean the surface where the water pump gasket is going to sit. Make it nice and shiny. I'm using a carbide scraper to go around and get the majority of the gunk off. A light abrasive piece of sandpaper. And you could use a straight blade. Using a bit of parts cleaner on a clean rag, go around and get any dirt, oil, or leftover residue off of the mating surface. Remove the old O-rings install the new ones. Remove the old one. If you have any corrosion inside of here, go ahead and clean it out now using a wire brush. Install the new O-ring on the thermostat assembly. You're also going to want to clean this surface. Using a pick, clean the channel. Do your best to not scrape the mating surface. Install the water pump gasket. And we're going to push the water pump into place. Using a soft face hammer, you can tap on the water pump if needed to be able to help you seat it onto the O-ring. And then install your bolts. And one nut. Torque the water pump bolts to 15 foot pounds and the one nut to 13. You want to go around and tighten them down evenly. You don't want to just torque one side fully and then do the other. Try to do it in a few passes. Put a bead of sealant around the thermostat housing. I'm going to put one bolt through to help me line it up. And we're going to start with the O-ring and push it straight on. Snug them down. Torque these bolts to 15 foot-pounds. Install the idler pulley. For the timing belt, start that bolt by hand, install the tensioner, start this bolt by hand as well. Torque the idler pulley to 29 foot-pounds. 
torque the timing belt tensioner bolt to 19 foot pounds. There's a little hole on the bottom of the crank cog. That is going to be our timing mark that we're going to line the timing belt up with. Making it red right now to see it a little bit better. There's a line on our timing belt. I'm going to install that dot onto the dot on the bottom. There it is right there. We're going to work the belt up over and make sure it's nice and tight on the right side and bring it over to the left cam. Using a 17 millimeter socket on a ratchet, I slightly moved the right cam forward just a hair to be able to line up my belt. With the belt installed, you should have a really tight tension around the right cam. There should be just a little bit of slack on the tensioner side of the belt with all of your timing marks lined up. I recommend using a new tensioner. However, if you have to reuse the old one, you can put it in a vise and push it down and then there will be a little hole that you can slip a pin through. If you don't have a vise, it's very hard to do, but you can use a large pair of pliers and try to push it down. When you do this, you want to be nice and smooth and do it very slowly. We're going to install our tensioner with the two bolts into its position. When doing this, you want to go back and forth on each bolt, tightening them incrementally. Torque these two bottom bolts to 12 foot-pounds. If you can't get a torque wrench in there, do the best you can. Double check and make sure that all of your timing marks are lining up. I have red on red down here. The left hand cam line is marked up with my red mark up here and the right cam is also lined up up here. With all of those lined up, we're going to pull the pin on our tensioner. I'm going to install the crank pulley bolt. Using a 22 millimeter socket, we're going to turn the engine over to full 360 degree revolutions. And at that point, we are going to ensure our timing marks and belt are in the right spot. You only want to spin the engine in a clockwise direction. Our cam pulley marks lined up as well as the marks that I had on the cog that I made myself. And as long as your timing marks up top line up and the ones on the crank cog line up, then you should be good to go. It's lined up here, it's lined up on the other side, and then my two marks down here, the red and the black, are lining up with the marks that I made on the back cover. Install the tone ring. Make sure the concave part is facing the radiator. Make sure that it's keyed in. And then install the black cover. All the four 10 millimeter bolts. Snug them down. Install the crank pulley. Make sure it's on completely and key it into place. Install the crank bolt. This plastic piece came off when we were taking off the water pump. Make sure you put that back.
install the fan bracket back into place. On the 12 millimeter bolts, torque them to 12 foot pounds. On the 14 nut and bolt, torque them to 24 foot pounds. Install the left hand belt cover. Put the connector through. Line the stud up in the middle. Over your connector. Make sure you install the little grommet. And install that into the cover. Route your harness down and around. Put it back into its connector. Like that. Go around and install the rest of the bolts. And snug them down. Don't forget the nut in the middle. Pull your harness back over. We're going to pick the AC compressor up and put it into the right spot. on the back of the AC compressor. It's a 14 millimeter and it's right in front of the dipstick. Install that. Then we're going to snug that down. Install the bracket and you're not going to be able to see so you're going to find the stud, put the nut on the bottom, install the bolt into the top of the bracket, make sure that it's on the stud. Before installing the bracket, put the 14 millimeter bolt into the bottom. Snug down the bolt on the bottom. Torque this bolt to 36 foot pounds. You can't get a torque wrench in here. Do the best you can. Install the bracket. Install the nut on the bottom. Start that by hand and then start the bolt in the back of the compressor by hand as well. Right here. Snug them down. Now we're gonna go around and torque all the bolts to 36 foot-pounds. Torque the top bolt to 36 foot-pounds. Grab the AC bracket. Ground strap goes around. And install the little Phillips head screw in the top. Put the Phillips head screw through the ground strap. Tighten that down. 
Gonna reinstall the connector on the AC compressor. Push until you hear a click. And we're gonna install the other connector on the bracket. This is for the tensioner. Came out when we were pulling the bolt off. So we removed the nut off of the stud. Using an E7 socket, we are going to replace the stud and tighten it back down. Install the tensioner assembly. Torque all of these down to 25 foot-pounds. Install the middle timing cover. Two bolts. Snug those down. Grab the alternator. Install it into place. Snug down the bolt on the bottom. And then put on the two nuts for the generator. Torque the two 14 millimeter heads to 29 foot pounds. And torque the 12 to 25. Push the power steering pump back into place. Start the bolts by hand and the one nut. Snug all the bolts down. Torque these bolts to 13 foot-pounds. Install the timing cover. Three bolts. And one nut. Snug those down. Install the idler pulley. Snug it down. Torque the idler pulley to 29 foot-pounds. We previously installed a nut right under this connector. We're going to remove that. I'm going to grab our coolant line, drag it over. Slip this bracket under that connector harness. Should be a little clamp that goes in right here and holds this harness to the top of the timing cover. Ours is broken. We will not be reinstalling it. Install the line under the thermostat housing. Grab the clamp. 
I'm going to move it up. And while I have it pinched, I'm going to push the line on. I'm going to move this clamp up so the prongs are facing straight up so it doesn't have a chance to contact our belt. Put the bracket on the stud and then reinstall the nut. Install the connector right next to it. There is one more bolt for the coolant line bracket. Snug that down, pull this coolant hose around, and then we're going to attach it to the throttle body. There's a clamp. Move that back to its original position, just like that. Install the fan pulley. We're not going to put any screws in that yet. And using the belt diagram on the hood, we are going to route this belt and leave it tucked up right here for now. Once we have our fan installed on the pulley, we'll go ahead and finish up installing the belt. Install the fan. Start the nuts by hand. Using a 12 millimeter wrench and a pry bar, I'm going to go around and tighten down these nuts while using the pry bar to hold the fan assembly still. Torque the nuts to 16 foot-pounds. If you can't get a torque wrench in here, do the best you can. Using a 14 millimeter socket, pulling in a counterclockwise direction, pull your belt over your socket. Install the belt onto the tensioner pulley. Make sure the belt is sitting in all of the grooves of all of the pulleys, and you're good to go. Install the coolant hose. Reinstall the clamp into place. Install the radiator fan shroud. Rest it on the fan. Install the radiator. Install the bolt in the radiator. There's two on each side, one on top, one on bottom. Install the bolt on bottom. Snug the bolts down. Do the same thing on the other side. Install the fan shroud to the radiator. Four bolts, one on top, one on bottom. Do the same thing on the other side. Snug them down. Install the upper radiator hose. Pinch the clamp. Return it to its original position. Reinstall the coolant overflow line to the radiator. Install the intake.
If you have the original clamp, there will be a little hole to hold the clamp for you and then snug it down. Do the same thing on the other one. There's a little hose in the back that we disconnected. Put the hose back on the intake manifold, pinch the clamp, pull it back. This hose goes in a little plastic connector right here. Reinstall the vacuum hose back on the intake hose. Reinstall the clamp. And then this line and this line fit into a bracket. Install the vacuum hoses into the plastic bracket on the side of the timing cover. Reinstall the bolt, the power steering line bracket. Snug it down. Reinstall the coolant overflow line to the radiator. Install the plastic cover. Two nuts on top and snug them down. If you covered this, remove that cover now and reinstall the transmission cooler line. Using a pair of pliers, grab the clamp and return it to its position. Do the same thing on the other one. Reinstall the clamp. Reinstall the lower coolant hose and return the clamp to its original position. Install the skid plate. There's two hooks that'll hook into this front cross beam. There should be six bolts holding this on. Three in the front and then three in the rear. We only have two bolts. The other three in the back should be in this hole here, one in here, and then the third in here. Add coolant. You want to make sure it has this gurgle. If it's not gurgling, it means the whole system is not sealed and there's going to be a leak somewhere. Once you fill your radiator, leave the cap off, start the vehicle, run the vehicle for 15 minutes or so. You can turn your heat on high, make sure there's no bubbles coming out. With the heat on, if you're having cold pockets, the system's not fully bled, wait until you have consistent heat and make sure your engine doesn't overheat. Install the radiator cap. If you lost any transmission fluid during this job, you're going to want to refill that. Pull the dipstick out, add some transmission fluid. Once you've added fluid, put the dipstick back in and pull it out. With your transmission cold, this is the max line, this is the minimum line, and with the transmission hot, this is the minimum line and this is the maximum line. Depending on where your transmission is in temperature, fill to the appropriate level. When you're done checking, reinsert the dipstick. Make sure it locks in place and this tab is over the top. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.